Welcome to video 2 on graphing polar equations. We're going to look at the next example where we're asked to sketch the graph of the polar equation r squared equals cosine 2 theta by filling out the table. Our angles are 0, pi over 6, pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 5 pi over 6, and pi. We also have solved the equation r squared equals cosine 2 theta for r, so we can actually graph the thing, and we have to remember that when we take the square root of an equation, we have to use the plus or minus sign in front of it. Because of this, we are going to have two solutions for each angle we substitute in. When we substitute 0 into our equation, we'll have r equals plus or minus the square root of cosine of 2 times 0, which is equal to plus or minus 1. The next substitution will be pi over 6, and r will equal plus or minus the square root of cosine of 2 times pi over 6. This will equal plus or minus 0.71. The next substitution will be pi over 4, and we will have r equals plus or minus the square root of cosine of 2 times pi over 4. And this will give me 0. Now, this next one, we have 3 pi over 4. That gives me r is equal to plus or minus the square root of cosine of 2 times 3 pi over 4, which is equal to 3.16227766 times 10 to the negative 7, which means it's an extremely small number. We could say slightly larger than 0, but definitely tiny very small positive, so we'll say approximately 0. And then the next one we'll check is 5 pi over 6, which will give me a substituted value, r is equal to plus or minus the square root of cosine of 2 times 5 pi over 6, which is equal to plus or minus 0 0.71. And the last one we have is r is equal to plus or minus the square root of cosine of 2 times pi. This gives me plus or minus 1. Now this is approximate as well, but it's so close to 1 that for our graphing purposes, we're just going to call it that. Now that I have my angle and my radius for each one of these, I'm going to graph this as best I can. I've color-coded these on purpose so you can kind of see what's going on. When I'm at an angle of zero radians, I have a one and a negative one radius. Let's go ahead and call one this kind of bolded circle here, and two, this other circle out here. This will help us graph this so that you can understand what's going on. Now let's go back and color code this. At zero radians, I'm at one and negative one. At pi over six, I'm at 0.7 and negative 0.7. At pi over 4, I, my radius is at 0 and 0, so, so right in the middle. At 3 pi over 4, my radius is so tiny that it's basically zero. 
so tiny. And then at 5 pi over 6, we're at plus or minus 0.7 again. And then at pi, we are at plus or minus 1 again. So you might be wondering, what in the world did we just do? Well, if you were to fill in these extra angles that don't have a value assigned to them, you could probably see a better picture of what's happening. My graph is expanding in both the plus and minus direction, and it starts out at plus or minus 1. It loops toward the pink dots, then it loops toward the green dot, then it goes to plus or minus 0.7 as the angle increases again, because this was such a small value here, and we get back out to bumping the blue dot back out to the brown dot at one, plus or minus 1. So I hope you can see the order this goes in. So let's label these. 1 and 1, 2 and 2, 3, and 3, and finally 4 and 4. So this graph wraps around and it makes this figure 8 shape. I want to show you how you can graph these polar functions but you're going to have to set up your calculator to do this. First we'll go to mode and we'll look at function notation and we're going to arrow to the right until we get to polar. We're going to make sure we're in radians because that's what we are using in this particular example. Now when I go to y equals I can input second square root of cosine of 2 theta. Do you see how when I change to polars, now instead of an x I get a theta? It's pretty cool. And that our radiuses are now given instead of y equals. I'm also going to enter the negative square root as a separate equation. So now I have two equations, the square root of cosine of 2 theta and negative square root of cosine of 2 theta. Now I need to figure out my window and see how it's changed instead of x's and y max and min. Now we have a theta min, a theta max, a theta step, and then an x min, an x max, and a y scale. If you arrow down, you can see that there's also information about scaling your window here. But for now, let's just go back up to the beginning. In our situation, we had 0 to pi as our max and min for theta. So I'm going to start out at 0, and I'm going to go to pi. Now the smaller you make your theta step, the slower it's going to graph. So I'm going to start with 0.1. I'm going to start with pi over 6 because we started with pi over 6 here. So do you see how it converts it to a decimal when I substitute it in? That's what we need to do. Now let's make sure that our x min and our x max represent what we know. We know that our radius max is out at 1, so I don't think I want to go past 2. So my x min would be negative 2, and my x max would be positive 2. I want my y min to be negative 2, 
and my y max to be 2. And let's go ahead and graph this. You can see that's pretty choppy. So I'm going to go back to the window and set my scale to, for the theta steps to be 0.1 instead, and I'm going to graph it again. That's looking a lot better, and it's looking similar to my sketch. Let's make it just a little bit more precise. We'll go into the window, and we will change this to a point zero five and graph that. And there is your polar graph. Now if you wanted to see a little bit better what's going on on here, you could always make your window slightly zoomed in. So you could go from like negative, negative 1.5 to 1.5. And the y min going from negative 1.5 to 1.5, and then graph that. And do you see how it's graphing the positives and the negatives separately? That is based on how we have the functions entered into the calculator. If we want it just a little more precise, we can go even smaller, but it'll take longer to graph. So we could go 0 0.01. And now you can actually watch it graph just a little nicer here. Now, there are a few things you can learn from watching this. The first one is the slower you graph is based on how small your steps are. But the smaller your step sizes are, the more precise your graph looks on your calculator. So you can kind of decide where the balance is there. You also need to be mindful of how much angle you've given the calculator to graph, because if you only give half of the angles that are needed, one period will not all be graphed because you restricted your angle.